Yo, what's going on, Kenny Sean? It's your boy, Dre, and we live. Y'all know what I'm saying? We in the studio center. Check us out. We going to get your boy, Rex. Let's do it. Never changed by Rex Evans. That's my favorite song, man. Is that Rex I see? Yo, Rex. What's going on, man? Thank you for visiting us today, man. Thank you to the Radio Station, man. How you feeling today, man? Great, man. How you feeling? You ready for this interview, brody? Too ready. For sure, for sure. Tell these folks what the top screen, what the top song on the stream is right now. Man, my favorite stream has never changed. I feel like the top streamer right now is definitely going to be late night. For sure. I tried to tell y'all that never changed was the one. But guess what? We'll see y'all when we get back to the station. But like I said, y'all finna enjoy this KSU I Radio experience with my guest, Rex Evan. Let's do it. Cause you keep telling the same lies over and over again. But the fact that I believe them every time you say I'm I don't know. What's going on, people? It's your boy, Dre. Y'all know what's going on. We always live. And we always allowed. That's all I was going to say, man. Sure. Thank God that we here today, man. Y'all know what I'm saying? Everybody shout out to God. Shout out to everybody. Y'all know what to say. Who I got with me today? Rex Evans. Rex Evans. Everybody shout out to Rex Evans. Also, I got my co-host. Andrew or AJ. <laughs> <laughs> my boy Andrew and AJ. Y'all, man, make sure y'all tap in with us. Make sure y'all follow us everywhere. Can you out radio. So, today we're going to get this interview started with our special guest. First of all, Rex, explain the meaning behind your name, Rex Evans. Um, the meaning behind my name, Rex Evans, is a very crazy story, man. Uh, I was just born with that name. Uh, my, my mother blessed me with that name, and I just went with it. That's cool. I was reading some of your influences. It's a really cool kind of a retro feel, kind of like um, Cameo and Prince. And yeah. The Weeknd, too, has a retro feel. So are you trying to give that same, you know, feel or, you know, um, those influences or... I would like to kind of give a kind of like a a soulful vibe to like a modern sound. I guess yeah, I, I would definitely say that Cameo, uh, Prince, The Weeknd all have that kind of early '90s, you know, late '80s, and it's like you know it make you feel something every time you hear it. Yeah. Right, right. When you say soulful meaning behind the music, what do you mean in that category of you want to bring some soulful music? You know, my, my, my definition of soul for music is James Brown. Cause okay. You know what I mean? Soul is just <laughs> what taps into that 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 intimate, that that bare kind of just emotional level. Correct, correct. And with the soulful sound, do you pay attention to both the sonics and the lyrics? Or are the what plays the most importance to you in your music? That's a great question. Oh, I really like to like how it sounds. So I like to find how I want it to feel and sound, and then I'll find the lyrics. Because I feel like if you get the way you want to say it, what you say is a little less important because you can, it's, it's like everything's a medium for expression. Correct, correct. So somebody can sit here and go, ooh, and make you feel, you know what I'm saying? It can <laughs> yeah, provoke yeah. an emotion like, without like even them saying something. Right. Yes, so correct. it's like, it's a combination of, of using them together. But more importantly, I feel the most important to me personally, like, you know, 1A, 1B is definitely how I say it. Yeah. Right, right. Well, this is an important question that everyone should know around the world. Describe to me what your creative process is like in the studio. My creative process in the studio. So it can start two ways. One way, I got something to say personally. Like, I woke up with something to say mm -hmm. so I can build around that. The other way is I just hear something, a beat that inspires me. Okay. And then it just provokes something and I go off that. Now my favorite is the beat inspires me and I go off of that. Okay, I know you said the beat inspires you, but how do you pick the beat? Is it off of a feeling you in from that day or what 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 makes you pick that beat? Like never change. What inspired you never change? Okay, so never change. I that's one of them ones where it's just I had something to say so I built the beat around that. Mm -hmm. Now my like I said, my favorite Ooh, this is the one, is when a beat provokes something that I didn't know was there, and then I can go off in a new little little tangent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, I would say, with Never Change, 
the words just spewed out and then the guitar melody was already laid by right. my boy Gabe. Shout out my boy Gabe. And then we went and added the drums and it was just beautiful, man. It just fit how it needed to fit. So sure. we just left it there. That's perfect. So like more about your creative process, like when you're like in the car or something, are you listening, like going to the studio or doing something, creating music? Mm -hmm. Do you listen to your inspirations heavily or do you kind of distance yourself away from your inspirations hmm. when you're creating music? When I'm creating music, I just like to not, I don't even think about it that like deep. I just want to feel good. So if I'm in a space where it's like, I know I want to create today, but I know I'm feeling a little blue. I want to, I want to take something that's going to really make me feel that way yeah. so that I can, I can take it to the studio and express my feelings. Of what's it. the high, what's the competition? Like, what's the main thing you need? Like, the most competitive aspect of music? The most competitive aspect of music, I feel like, is topping yourself. Because mm -hmm. we all want to aspire to make music. When you aspire to make music, you know, you're trying to express yourself and better yourself. Mm -hmm. um, so, every time I make a song, it's not to necessarily be better than the last one. But, you know, you have aspects of everything that you learn collectively as you keep going. So, you want your music to kind of... Correct. Keep going yeah, up. Yeah, keep it. going forward. So it's like the most competitive thing to me is staying in that space to where like consistent. Consistent. Yeah. That's right. The That's the most. Uh, thank you. Consistency. And, and and being okay with what you're making, loving what you're making, loving the process, not the end result. Okay. And I feel like that's the most competitive part. If you're competing with somebody else, it's got to be numbers wise. Because if you're talking about creatively. Nobody with somebody else. That. I feel like that's a great perspective to have because in the world of like streaming services, there's so much content out there and it's basically impossible to compete with anybody like yes. that. So I feel like that's a really great perspective to have where you're just focused on, on yourself and your, your com competition is you and trying to make the best thing you can. Right. Because a lot of people say, you know, you're only good as your last, what your last input is and stuff like that. So exactly. I think that's a, a really interesting Correct. Correct. Trust Correct. the process, the end result will be That's, there. That's I tell people that all the time, stuff. make sure you trust in the process, man. Music is a game where you have to just trust in yourself on it because your right hand man can't even might not even be with you on your music. But if you believe it, you gotta believe it. That's what I tell people every day at the end of the day. Like a lady came in here and asked me about Christmas. She said, How do you feel about Christmas? I said, Christmas can be Christmas any day. You know what I'm saying? You could put a Christmas tree up in your room and put some gifts under it and tell your kids it's Christmas. Like, it's the how you present it. You know what I'm saying? It don't matter about the day. So, from that being said, what is your favorite part about being a rapper or musician? And what is your least favorite part about being a musical creator or musical content creator? You know what I'm saying? All right, so my favorite part is the people I meet mm -hmm. um, and the growth within myself, man. I started this journey and like with a different mindset and it helped me grow into a completely different person, artist. So like when I say my favorite part is just getting to know people, getting to know myself, it's like a beautiful thing for real. Mm -hmm. So like, man, collabing with people, like, Feeling different energies, you know what I'm saying? Like seeing what other people go through. Like all music is is just perspective. So it's like when somebody, if, if we made a song together, you'll yeah, feel it. Like and the, it's about this. Our verses will be talking about the same thing, Correct. but it's just completely different perspective. It's just like we get to know each other through a whole different avenue. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's just getting to know people, letting people know me, learning who I am as I go. Man, that shit, I'm, stuff is beautiful. And how do you feel about like? your accomplishments so far because you've had a, a couple projects out and from what I read you you were on your song was on on my block is that right mm -hmm. so that's oh, that's yeah. a pretty big deal to have like a that those accomplishments so how do you feel about Appreciate looking you. back at your <laughs> looking back at your achievements and stuff like that do you I, look at back at those heavily or or do you just move forward and not really look look at those I feel like in the moment when they come I it doesn't really feel like much, yeah. But when I look back, I'm like, dang, like that happened. It's a lot. Like, okay. Or this happened. It's like, but in the moment, it's like, 
life's crazy. So it's like in the moment you're you just, just like, I gotta, I'm trying to get this next song done. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like what it, they're talking about this. I'm overdue for these things. I'm not even right. worried. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it's like, but then you look back and you're like, oh snap, like that was a crazy year. Or yeah, right. I'm so blessed to even have that moment. That was interesting to know that your song was on on my block. When you, I don't know if you watched it. Right, watched it, but when you watched it and heard your song, what was that feeling like? Like, did you have to like take it in, like, oh snap, that's that's me on the TV, like, you know what I'm saying? Cause me personally, like, I don't even um, true, like, I get excited when somebody posts a TikTok, like, but how did it feel to have your song on a TV show, like, that people know about, like, they was tuned in, like, people probably was vibing to the song and they didn't know who it was. Like, me personally, I probably didn't vibe to the song. It was like, who is that, like? I know it. So, man, have y'all heard those commercials where it's like, hey, your case just settled. Uh, and you're like, what? <laughs> it was, like, it was right, that's like... how, yeah, it was like, hey. So, they said they might have something. I'm like, oh, okay. Nah, like, for real. That was hard, man. And then the next thing you know, you're like, calling back, you're like, hey, like, what's up? Like, <laughs> and then, yeah, it's so... It was surreal. Um, definitely a good moment, and it just made me hungry for more, for real. Like, it made me want to go get some more. Yeah, it's insane, because I probably would have had that episode on like, multiple times. Like, I would have just watched that episode. Watch you know what I'm saying? I, I would have been like, I'm on there. It's, 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 I would have been like just elated that the fact that I would have a song. So, would that be a song that you would tell new listeners of Rex Evans to listen to? Or is there other songs in your catalog that you think would be the most representative of you or what what are some songs that you feel like people should really really listen to that's crazy because i was just having this conversation i feel like every song is a representation of me and they have there's a broad range of songs and i think the beauty of rex evans when you go to my page or you know anything any spotify or artist profile you can hit play and hear just a bunch of different types of good solid music that are going to make you Feel good, bad, in between, make you feel whatever you need to feel, and you're going to be able to just press play and not press pause. Right, correct. So, as we have, speaking about, like, things that we have accomplished, what is the biggest thing that challenges you while making music? Mm, the biggest thing that challenges me while making music, I would say, is finishing the recording process. I feel like a lot of times because music is a self-release for me. It's not something I do, it, I do to present to the world, but initially I started to just for me, you know what I'm saying? So that's what really makes me want to make it, is self-expression. So when I feel like I've expressed myself enough, the process right. is over. Process. But it might be 12 bars and that's the whole song, you know what I'm saying? So the most frustrating, or the, like, challenging, challenging part is like, okay, once I've, Feel like I've said everything I need to say. How do I structure this into a song? How do I turn this part, add melodies in the background, and not yes, go to the I next song question. and be like, I want to express new feelings. So as we were saying in your creative process when we were describing it, so in the creative process, out of everything in the music, so you know you got your verse, you pick the beat, you do ad libs, you can put funny sounds on it, you can put a sample on it. What is the hardest thing? in the studio for you to, you know, create. What you take the most time on? My favorite part? Mm-hmm. The references. I just like screaming over beats, man. I just like singing and going crazy over the beats, hearing new things, trying new sounds, trying new ways to say stuff. Like I said, it's a creative process. Mm-hmm. I like how to say things and then like what I'm saying, we'll figure it out. But like, man, when I say like just trying to push the edge or try some new different things in a in a in a creative way that is still me. Mm-hmm. That's my favorite part. Mm-hmm. I don't know I don't know if that makes some sense to to the listeners out there. But and it and it seems like with your creative process it seems like you put a lot of effort into what you're doing. Um, and I know a lot of artists deal with like perfectionism. So do you deal with that where you're really you get stuck on something because you want it to just be right? the way you want it to, or is it something that you have to eventually just let go and say, this is the 
raw take of this, and I need to take this raw take because this is going to be the best version. I, I don't need to edit this out over and over again. It's it's a middle ground. It's um sometimes that first time you do it, it just feels right and everything's how it's supposed to be, but you might have messed up a word or two, yeah. and it's like dang went back and retried it, tried it, tried it, and the takes just aren't taken like you want it to take. Mm -hmm. But then you play it to somebody else and they're like, well, what are you talking about? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, what? You're delusional. I know what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So, like, in my head, it's that that time and off. I was about to yeah. say, like, like the in the studio, thing. when you're an artist, you are, you're doing the thing. So you might say, I got to get it. And then you hear it and it might be like, it might be too low. So you'd be right. like, hey, bro, I need a little more energy. I know what you're saying. From an artist standpoint, it don't it be nicks and that. It's like you and your engineer right. literally can get into it and be like, "Oh, I think it sounds good already." But you can be in the booth like, "Nah, bro, this ain't it." Like, I wanted to be like this, exactly. and they won't hear what you're saying because they not you in a way, right? And and that just goes down to just being okay with it. Like, I feel like it comes around. It comes down to the people around you. Mm -hmm. So like, that's building a team. Hey, what y'all think? If y'all think it's good enough. Hey, I'll, I, I'll, I'll, whatever. Let okay. go. When it, when it comes to the music, people, when they hear something, they're very quick to, you know, j judge like, oh, you sound like such and such. Mm -hmm. How do you respond to people when they say, oh, you sound like such and such? I feel like people going, anytime that you are different, people are going to try to for, put you in avenues that they feel comfortable. So, just so they can easily digest you, whatever you are. Right. So, I take it as a compliment. Is you trying to figure out where I fit in your life? I think it's another great, like, look to have as an artist because you, you look at like, like I watch interviews with athletes and stuff like that, and they get immediately like pro wrestlers. They'll get compared automatically to the Rock because of what they did and stuff like that. And it's like, I believe that you're supposed to. Take that and run with it. Your top three favorite things about being an artist. I know you said you like connecting with people and making the music, but what is your like like with your branding? What's your top three things with your branding about your artist? Um, basically, your, your artist brand. What is the top three things people should know about you? Like, what are you influencing people to do? What does someone want to get from this? Like, tell them how this can inspire them. Man, for me. Um, I feel like I represent just, you know, feelings, man. Just an artist out of Atlanta that is just trying to express himself, get through this this life. You know what I'm saying? It's just ups and downs. I, I Some people make music to live. Some people live and make music. You know what I'm saying? So I live and I make music. All right. So just being self, trying to express myself, trying to make it through there. And with your lyrical content, do you look to yourself only or do you have people in your family or people that have impacted you, your friends? Do you like to tell their stories or do you um, just try to focus on um, what you're experiencing? It's a mixture of both. I feel like most of the time it's 50-50. It's a lot of it is my life. But people are so close to me that sometimes other lives bleed into mine, and you, know, you <coughs> gotta tell the side story to get, you know what I'm saying, to the main story. Yeah, so, right. so it's just, it's a combination, but it all centers around me. Yeah. Okay. Well, in your music making process, what is your favorite style to, you know, get on? So, like, for instance, you got a hip hop, Rap. you got. Dang. So why is it? <laughs> it's the <laughs> easiest to it's just go. It's just the easiest to just Okay, I feel that. Just go. Now do I release most rap stuff? No. I was just gonna say you I didn't even know rap. Yeah, so I just like to do it. Though. But like, rap is the easiest one to uh, do. So which one is your most significant music making genre? I would say Like R&B. it would it would make someone a day like this would inspire someone to be like Oh yeah, like that Rex Evans, I got to hear this one. Just some some like R and B's like kinda trap R and B. Mm -hmm. Okay. On some like kind of indie vibe. It's it's a, it's So we so we touched on the point of the fact that like influences in music, 
What? Who was one of your influencers, or what are your top three influencers in your music? Like, who could you say, like, oh, I took some pointers from this person's music. I like this how this person beat sound. I like how this person flew on the beat, and I mixed it all up to make my own sound. Who were your top three people that influenced your music? I would say my mother. Okay. Um, I would say Metro Boomin, and, and a mix with. Metro Boomin and I can put Metro Boomin and Travis Scott in like the same. So you got your mama, Metro yeah. Boomin, and Travis Scott in the same. They in the same one. So was your was your um? Do you and have? Then, oh, oh so go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. So when you said your so like to clarify like is you, do you have family members that are musicians oh, as yeah, well? Oh yeah, most oh, definitely. Cool. My mother is a um, Grammy nominated producer and um, writer and background vocalist and instrumentalist. So, um, yeah, so from, uh, like, she's original of Dungeon Family. Um, yeah, man. So, wow. So, yeah. like, was she working with Outkast yeah, and stuff like Outcast, that? Yeah, Outkast, TLC, Tony Braxton, Monica. That is insane. Everybody. When people hear Rex Evans, what are they going to know, like, this the R&B guy? This is, you know, tell me how they going to lay, not label you, but what are you going to be known for at, in your career? Like, what would you like to be known for, if you get what I'm saying? I want to be known as the artist with no box. Mm -hmm. And I want to be known as the dude that just make you feel what you feel that you didn't even know you was feeling. Okay. Like, I just want to, you know how when people talk about Drake and they, they think Drake and then they think, Feelings. Right, yeah. Like lover boy. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Love, now it's lover boy. Like, he wants them all. It used to be like, I just want you. You know what I'm saying? But with me, I just want people to feel like, hey, man, this is a dude out here that he's fired with the music. Yeah. And on top of that, she want to? he make you feel. Correct. So, touching back on your mom. Since she said your mom was a background singer and... She worked with many big groups like Outkast. Did your mom accomplishments inspire you to chase your dreams in music, like to do the same thing? No. So I started music late. I started music like after high school, after college. That's what, oh, I started in college. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I started right in the middle of college and I wasn't taking it serious. It was just like, oh, my friends do music. I've always had music stuff around, so yeah. I'll just tinker with it so they can do music. So it was like, all right, I'll make a beat. All right. All right, I kind of sound good. Okay, <laughs> okay, hold up. Now I kind of sound good. Yeah. Hold up. All right, let me all do right. this again, you know? I remember I went to the studio the first time with my boy um, Slick P. I, my mom didn't even know I was doing music the first two years just because it was just something for fun and just something I wanted to do myself. Yeah. And I felt like she was just, you take the final finish suit. Oh, no, you only go to her if you're serious. So I was like, man, I'm just trying to. Yeah. So you were you were skeptical about showing your mom because she was so maybe so serious about yeah, what I, she did and you didn't want her. I just want to express myself. I was yeah. just trying to. So did you, when you were, did she ever um, express feelings towards you about, hey, why don't you go into music? Like, did she ever kind of, not push necessarily, but you know, recommends you doing music. Did she ever see that musical talent that you, you've always kind of had? Most definitely. She, um, it was never like, hey, you should do music. It's just, I was a inquisitive mind. Yeah. So, like, growing up, there's always guitars, drum I was just sets, say, everything's at the house, studios at the house. I was just going to ask like, you. Like, uh, people would come by that you'd be like, oh, snap. Like, you know what I'm saying? Oh, or <laughs> this person. But it's like, man... She never pushed it. It's just something that was always around. Okay. When I was like eight, she would like, if there was a drum set, I'd be like, I want to play. She'll teach me the drum. So it's like, I knew how to like subconsciously play all this stuff. Like I picked up a guitar uh, a year ago, yeah. but because my whole life I've seen guitar and every two weeks, right. mom teach me a chord when I'm eight or nine or 10. You remember. Now you when I play the guitar, it's like, you That's know what I'm saying? Crazy. It's it's um, your story is like your background is so interesting because it's it's just 
it feels it seems like your life was just filled with music kind of like you're destined to do this so it's like like when you what what do you remember your first because i remember my first like memory of ever ever listening to music just the, the the impact it had on me like i remember the first song i ever listened to was the way you move by outcast and like mm. like when i was in like my mom's car like that's the first song i ever remember listening to so like you know you're such a um music has obviously been such a big part of your life so like what what's your first music memory i would say brandy riding in the car eating green beans from chick-fil-a <laughs> in the back of a, a, a silverado not a silverado a, um a jeep cherokee Listening to Brandy, uh, baby, 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 don't you know that you're so fine? Yeah, that's that my first music. I don't know if anybody even knows that song. So right. that's a, oh, we do, we do, we do. Call I was just down, gonna ask yeah. you this. Yeah. So, so that friends. song right there, we'll do. I was just gonna ask you this. It's crazy that you started singing the song, but what would be your dream songs to sample? Like, you sample this song and you make a beat on top of it and you make your top song and you know, like. Soon as you drop this, people gonna be like, "Oh yeah, this is the stuff." You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> this is it. Like, which one is gonna be? Ooh, that's he's a thick Prince. Guy. Prince girlfriend. Ooh. Okay. Prince and why? Girlfriend. Why would you do Prince girlfriend? Let me know why. Because I don't know about Prince. In my song, I said I feel like Prince comes on rocking this purple. That's the only thing I know about Prince. His favorite color is purple. Explain to me why that song would be chose. Because if I was your girlfriend, it was him singing from a girl's perspective about a girl that wanted to be his girlfriend. Now, did, if that was supposed to happen, or if it was like a reference for somebody else, I don't know. But the whole thing is about like, would you even remember if I was dead? You know what I'm saying? Like, it's like, it's just the whole concept yeah. is just fine. And I feel like it would work out now because like, you can talk about, like, I could speak about what I would necessarily want from a female or like what I could be as a, a dude maybe. You know what I'm saying? Like I feel like it opens up a lot of different aspects. Especially in a world right now with social media and the dating scene is a little questionable. <laughs> so yeah. it's like to hear somebody speak about what they could possibly do for you. And that's a that's an interesting uh, thing to know about too because you know you see in in hip hop and rap too now, you see more women, you know, going out and making rap songs that are, you know, and back in the nineties and the two thousands, the the guys they were pretty crazy <laughs> when it comes to talking about women, and now you get to see women talking about mm -hmm. men in that same crazy way. Gorilla. So now it's like you're even at the <laughs> you're even at the playing field. So it, it's it's a that's an interesting take. Though. This might be a crazy take. Now I feel like. Yes, in the 90s and 2000s, how, how men speak, spoke about women in songs went a lot of, it went very, yeah. <laughs> and, but also, R&B, the R&B was a little different then too, you had people that like, didn't mind begging, dudes that didn't mind begging, like saying, baby, please meet me at the altar, yeah. you know what I'm saying, like a lot of different R&B, yeah, like was they were singing, right, yeah. man, it was like very, they was putting it out there. So you gotta we had the men. The men was also Charlie like Wilson? very apologetic too. Yeah. Yeah. He was going we crazy. Very, we were very, very apologetic. So I feel like the tone of, of just like, I, like it's flipped completely. So now you got women. I feel like talking about that, talking they dirt, yeah. and then dudes are talking they dirt too. But it's not like it used to be because it I used to be like, baby, I keep having on the knee. I, I know. So, okay. Now it's like I can't wear, can't get on the knee because I'm wearing all white. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I'm gonna get Girl, on my knee. I think the society has changed with the world too, from in the '90s and now that we in like the '20s. I call it the '20s because it's 2020s. But now that we up in the 2020 era, I see that the music has changed a lot. Like how I was saying, Tupac is still a generational artist because Tupac. He used to talk about, like, he used to tell you folks what's going on, but like you said, he is still telling a girl, like, come back over here and be with the king or something. You know what I'm saying? Or even have a song like Dear Mama or have a song. Yeah. Or I got like, songs like that. Or like, or have some stuff where it's like building it up, like building yeah. up the community. Make it some Yeah, every, everything right. nowadays. Okay. Baby. That's what I was saying. So, your song, what 
what uh not your song, but your music. You know how we saying this certain music. What category would your music be in for like Tupac? He was a generational artist that talked about street music and I mean street life and what goes on in the mm-hmm. street. But he also talked about his pain in right. the song. And then he talked about with his mama, like Kanye too, Kanye West. He talked about his life, but he talked about his main thing. All his songs was his mama wanted him to be a scholar, but he chose music. Right. Right. So what what is a lesson or the theme of your genre, not your genre, the theme of your creation of music? Navigating self and love. Mm-hmm. Like navigating like. T- touch more on that. Like so. Love for self, love for other people is a thin line. Like you, it's 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 hard to have one without the others. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like that alone is enough for anybody. You know what I'm saying? To yeah. try to navigate. So I feel like that's what I represent. I represent just navigating self, love, relationships with yourself, relationships with people. Yeah. And just it, it might it, it sounds real soft, but it's like that's everything. Uh, and I, so. I feel like like with musicians you can you know I, I'm not like a musician or anything but you know I, I love to play music and stuff like that and I feel like you know you take things in differently from other people when you love music and stuff like that and you kind of digest stuff and analyze stuff and in, um, in real life and that some people may just like just it comes out the other ear. So is that something that you think about when you're making your music? When you make music and you show people what um, your lyrical content and stuff like that, do you think that you analyze things in a way that maybe other people that don't um, make music analyze things in? I have a real devil's advocate mindset sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So like, um, yeah, I feel like my perspective is just always a little bit. I wouldn't say different, but it's always just a little bit. It's interesting. Yeah, we'll go with that. Um, just because of how I was raised, interesting yeah. life. So my music is just it be everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> that's a great definition because I tell. Okay, so it's a little app. I know we're gonna talk about promotion right quick. So, what is your? I'm gonna tell you how I do it. But what is your top way to promote yourself right now at the moment? My top way right now, man. We Instagram, TikTok, and then together. Cause right now we're I'm I'm working on a, a project. Don't know what it's gonna be called yet. <laughs> I'm leaning towards Lost or some. I don't yeah. know. We getting there. But um, is it an album or? A nah, EP? it's gonna be an EP. Your it's EP? gonna be short. Um, figuring out how I want it to be presented, how I want yeah. it to be heard and seen. That's when I feel like we'll be like, okay, we need videos. We need to, all right, let's try to set this up. Let's try to set this up. But right now, we just are in this trying to, yeah, taking steps to see what's going on. And because you, you, so you had an, did you have you have an album put out last year and you had an album put out this year? I keep so meaning them to be AEPs. It's yeah. just like we always put one more and it goes into the album slot. And so oh, okay. So how many songs is the EP? It's supposed to be a certain amount of minutes. Fifteen. Right. But it's like they judge it by songs. And it's like, yeah. I can have eight songs, but it can only be six minutes. Oh, yeah. And it's like they'll put it in the album category. So, like, do you, when, you, when you're in the album process, do you focus on how many songs you're making? Or do you focus on the minutes of your, album, of your project? So, I just focus on putting, getting the point across. So, yeah. it's like... Every EP, I kind of have like a a tone, I guess. Yeah. Um, I try to collect the songs that I've made over the time period, take my strongest ones, and just see what I can put together based on that. Yeah. And then yank it through, you know what I'm saying? If we going through a tough time, tough little breakup, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Tough breakup. <laughs> so I know I know I'm asking boring questions about the industry, but it's just it's it's an interesting um, it's an interesting topic, but. Um, going back to some of your influences, you know, we talked about, you know, what song would you sample and what artist would you sample? Mm-hmm. So what artist would you want to work with? Any artist that you could work with right now that is working today, what would be that artist that you feel like you can make, you could, you know, not only that you like, but that you could 
you feel like if you collaborated and two y'all two came together, it would make something that was really amazing? I feel like if it was like a one day thing and I had to get like the best record out of one day, I feel like maybe I want to say almost Drake. Ooh. Just because I know the process would be so seamless with Drake, right? Yeah. So it's like if it's one day, but if it's like lock in for a minute, like hey, let's just sit down until we come up with something dope. Yeah. I definitely would go with somebody like Kendrick, Steve Lacey, almost. I kind of want to go great Steve one. Lacey. Um, would you would you let him? So would you would you let him play Cali guitar with, or would you would you Cali. play guitar? With nah, he's <laughs> definitely. So look, when I play, I play to piece it together. Yeah, it's never to like like if you were like Rex, go on stage, y'all. You got his guitar and your mic. Yeah, I'm gonna put the guitar down and use the mic. You know what I'm saying? So it's like <laughs> I've seen him do that, that too. I think some of his songs, he's like, okay, I did too much on the guitar part. I need to just right. <laughs> see. He can just. Shred it. Yeah. I'm trying to like. I, I want to go here, here, yeah, yeah. here. Let me record this part, yeah. and then I'm gonna build around that. Yeah. He over there. Is, so. so, are you trying to get to a point where you're on the guitar and singing at your shows for every song? I feel like I'm. 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 I'm trying to get to the point where if I can do one or two, I'll be good. Yeah. I'm at a place where I can do them to myself. Fine, I can practice, go through them, yada yada yada. Yeah. But on stage, you know what I'm saying. I would always like to present something different. So yeah. Right. I so, want to get to that point. So I normally ask every artist here this because this is another aspect of like being in the music industry. But what would be your ideal performance? Like the perfect performance? Where would it be? Um, what crowd would you invite? Like, what would be your ideal for like? Like the dream performance, like when people ask girls, what would be your dream date? What would be your dream performance? <laughs> My dream performance would be right now, just because I haven't had that like festival performance. But I feel like my I, that's what my heart telling me, but my soul telling me. If I had like fifty people in a closed room. That really mess with my music. Yeah. And I could just go through them and they know them and we just have a good time. I was like, that is my dream performance. Sure. Yeah. Everybody that really, the core ones. And do you, yeah. do you feel like you're developing as you, you know, you're seeing, you're streaming, you know, you're seeing, you're streaming, um, numbers go up. You're, you know, making these accom accomplishments that we talked about before where you're on, on my block and you're, you know, making albums uh, what seems like year to year almost or just projects year to year um, do you see a fan base at your at your shows and at on social media right now do you feel like oh this is really growing this is something that's like this is this is growing for me this could be good yes yeah. well, definitely and just like those moments where it was like in the moment I don't really notice or like or I'm not I pay attention and it feels good but I don't really see it. Yeah. it it's kind of similar in that moment, um, in those moments, excuse me. So like right now, we have uh, the Never Change on TikTok, where yeah. it's like we have like almost 1,100 videos that people have just been making to the song. Yeah. And it's like, he'll call me, he'll send a text, and he's like, ah, oh, we had 1,100. Yeah. Just yesterday we were at, you know, uh, and I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> We should, I still missing the song from the day. I don't know if it turned yeah. into, you know what I'm saying? Like, so just, just you're, you're constantly looking, you know, forward, and right. you're just not. It's, it's something that you just have to constantly worry about because you, you want to see your, you, you want to see your numbers go up in streaming, and right? You want, and you want, you, you, you really want this. Like, you want to have a sizable amount at your shows. You, you want to. You're really going for this, so right. I, I feel like that's like it's a it's a it's a great mindset to have because some people they do get stuck within, you know, not wanting to grow in that aspect. So I feel like that's it's, it's such an important um, aspect of artists. Be your best piece of advice to give another artist, musician, 
somebody who's wanting to start, what would you be your best key advice for somebody just starting rapping? And what would be your best piece of advice for someone who's rapping right now and they just don't know where they at? What would be your piece of advice for them to keep motivation? Okay. Don't get discouraged. It's a lot of time spent figuring out sounds. You know what I'm saying? Figuring out how to maneuver. Um, sometimes you might start and then you might get blessed or reach opportunities that help you advance. Yeah. Sometimes you have to end up figuring it out yourself. Sometimes it's a, a, a mixture of both. So it's just a yeah. matter of confidence. Um, staying mentally healthy. Yeah. And and not stopping. It's, 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 it's a yeah. numbers game. So it's yeah. like keep going it's, it's always going to be difficult but yeah. anything worth having is and it is it is when you say a constant process is it you going into the studio every day or is it something that you're just when you're out in regular life and you got you know you know you're doing your regular things like you're walking your dog and you're mm -hmm. you know making sure you're eating what you need to be eating are you you know reflecting on what you need to do is that what is that process like where you're are you do you need to be in the studio do you feel like every day or do you do you feel like you need some time to reflect so I feel like I need time to reflect and I feel like I need to be in the studio every day sometimes I just end up in the studio and just end up sitting in front of the mic and not doing anything yeah and just those times are needed because you know sometimes you just build enough confidence for this part to put on another song that had nothing yeah. to do with what you were just trying to so um most definitely yeah. I, i'm probably in the studio way more than i should be yeah i'm over it like <laughs> just in that thing trying yeah so and I, i've heard an interview with drake where he he talked about how he would some people would be like you know oh can i come in the studio with you and he would you know, tell them, you know, not every time sparks are not going to fly every time I come in the studio. So it's like, <laughs> you know, so it, 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 you know, I think just the, it's not, it's not like, oh, I'm making like an album a day. You know, right. it's, it's more like, building concepts. Th th yeah, building concepts, thinking about this stuff, I think is what's, I think, I think is um, crucial. Right, because it's like, it takes a lot of thought to even form one sentence when people are talking to another person. Like, think how yeah. awkward it is <laughs> for somebody to just have a regular conversation sometimes. Yeah. It's like getting in front of a mic and having a conversation with yourself that you want everybody to hear. Is, yeah. yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, like, yeah. I, yeah. I'm going to have to work on it. So... We're finna wrap this up soon. I normally do the hot 10 questions at 12.45, but this is gonna be one of my last questions for you. What is your best song like out right now? Why is it your best song? And give me the meaning and the process of what happened and what made you make this song. All uh, right, my best song right now. Black from the people. Is definitely gonna be Late night, never change. <laughs> and OT, sorry, I can't pick one, man. I don't know. Uh, I say late night just because it describes that kind of work ethic we were talking about. Like, yo, it don't look pretty. It, it looked like we having fun, but it ain't just fun. Yeah. It looks like a lot of things, but it's a lot of stress, right? It's a late night. <laughs> so, and just like everything that goes into that. So I, I definitely like late night, but never change. Definitely, it just hits instinctually every time somebody hears it. Okay. Like, yeah. yeah. Also, so when you're, I, I know you might perform already. So when you perform, how do you choose the song to perform? Like how you just said, oh, I don't know my favorite song. How do you know what song to perform? So usually I just go with the one that I know is going to get a reaction. Yeah. So. Never change. I know it's gonna get a reaction. Like it's pop. I look nothing like the song. Um, so as soon as I've come in with it, people are like, "So that's your intro to." It, so to it concert. has been recently. Yeah. Um, but man, people love little shoddy. Everything that I release has its own vibe and it has yeah. its own little 
yeah. thing to it. So it's like it doesn't really matter what I open up or go with, man. People people respond. Yeah, I think it's that's great too to have songs of so much variety, and you see that now with new musicians because you know music is is going to evolve through the years because it's just that's just how it is. You know, you have artists like Doja Cat who can make a rap song, right. and then but then and then you got you know, other songs that she's had where it's very pop influence and very R and B influence. Mm-hmm. So I feel like that's something you almost kinda need to be, you know, successful when it's in you know. So Rex, what we about to do now is the hot ten topics basically. I'm just finna ask you ten questions off the top of the dome. You got thirty seconds to answer them. <laughs> All so, ten or thirty seconds apiece? <laughs> thirty seconds apiece. Okay. You good, you good for sure. You ain't gotta be like this, this, that, nah, nah, nah. For sure, you know what I'm saying? But but it's but it's still right, right, right. that, that's why it, that's why it's called a hot one hundred right. though. You know what I'm saying? Because we just put it on you. So my first question is what's your go to meal before a performance? Go to potato chips. Potato Ooh, chips. Intellect. For sure, for sure. What's your go to candy? My go to candy, sour, uh, lifesaver. For sure, for sure. What's your favorite brand? My favorite brand regarding shoes. Shoes? Um, Nike. Okay. What what would you okay, you have a performance today, right? And you wanna get dripped out. Where store are you going to ASAP? What store am I going to ASAP? Neiman Marcus. Neiman Marcus for sure. Where is the I mean, what is your favorite type of beat? Favorite type of beat. So R and B, like where your genre at? Where your favorite? Pop. Type? Pop. Like and pop. then and then what is it gonna be bouncy or is it gonna be chill? Like Unpredictable. Unpredictable. Oh that's a great answer. For sure, for sure. What's your favorite drink? Green tea. Green tea, green tea, green tea But for not sure. like it the healthy way. I don't want it the bad way. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> it made me feel good hey, the green tea, but that's different. Tea. Yeah. I never heard you get a, you get a little bit of both. For sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. So, well, I'm gonna ask you a couple more, but let me think too. So, did I answer them too quick? Yeah, no, you answered them. You was answering them on time. Like, nobody <laughs> never, nobody, nobody <laughs> never be on point. <laughs> like you did. That's it why right. you get some thirty seconds. Yeah. <laughs> so like literally, okay. What's your favorite daughter record on? Uh, Pro Tools. Pro Tools for sure. Yeah. All right. And what's your favorite mic? Like, if you had to tell somebody to go get a mic right now, what's your go-to mic? Um. Uh, I use the Slate Digital mic, but if I have my choice, I go get a Sony. Like, for right, sure. but that's a lot of money. Yeah. For sure. And where would your next video, like a dream video, be a dream video spot? Where would you Japan. travel to? Ja- Japan. Where another spot you would travel to? Mm. Where, where, where is the place you want to travel to? Japan, right now. Japan, right now. Japan right for now. sure. Would you Tokyo? shoot a video yeah. standing on the Great Wall of China? Yeah. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, I'm just saying. I'm just, and what what do uh, what do you think makes an artist music video is better? Like, give me the top three things to make a good music video, and it's gonna be my last question. Um, right film grain, that '90s film VHS grain. Yeah. Telling you. Um, a '90s car or an '80s car, and um, a bunch of scenes of slow motion walking. Just party, I guess. That's the best. For sure, for sure. And also, let these people know who you is. Before we go, let them know where they can tap in with you at. And tell them to tap in with our radio. All right, so Rex Evans. Tap in with me on Instagram at R-E-X-A-E-V-A-N-S. TikTok, Rex A. Evans. Everywhere, Rex Evans. I appreciate KSU our radio for having me. Show, show. Y'all make sure y'all go support my boy Rex. We finna play Never Change and Late Night Up next, man. Y'all enjoy y'all day, man. Mm-hmm. Hey, that was good. I didn't look up. He messed me up on the hot one.